Hey everyone, it's Mark Dynamics here. I'm here at Zenith Records Pressing Plant in Brunswick, Victoria. It's a very exciting day for me because I get to see the cutting of my record and then it being pushed down onto wax here in the warehouse. It's the new album Archival Remix. It's coming out in a new Super Deluxe 2 LP edition. We'll talk more about that later, but let's go through the warehouse and have a chat to Luke, the cutting engineer at Zenith Records. Hey Luke, oh, great hey, to meet you. Mark, pleasure to meet you, man. Yes. Welcome to Zenith. Thanks very much. Welcome to the Cutting Cave. Indeed. You've got my album up on the screen. Can you go through the process of actually cutting the lacquer for me? Well, I guess, where do you start? I mean, first thing I do, pull up the audio, have a listen if anything kind of pops out to me without me looking at any buttons or dials or settings or anything. Mm. You know, from, from an audio point of view, I just listen first. You know, from there, I've got to get your audio translated well so that it can be cut physically. Um, because, you know, this is a physical analog process. Um, you know, and I guess from there, it's just kind of finding the balance between what's going to fit and what's going to sound good. You know, mm. we don't want any excessive distortion. We want to try and keep a really true representation of the original pre-master. Mm. And I've got to try and do that with as much level as I can and utilizing as much space as I can, yeah. you know, and then that's pretty much it, you know. How does the vinyl master differ from the CD master? Generally speaking, um, and ideally speaking, mm. it'll be uh, a little less limited. It won't be as pushed. Um, it won't be as over accentuated in the high frequency ranges. Um, and also the, the low end will be attenuated so that most of the low end energy is centered in the stereo mix and there's no out of phase. So those are the primary things that are, that are different between a digital master and a, a vinyl pre-master. So we can see the blank disc here. This is called a lacquer. Yeah, this is a lacquer. Yep, 14 inch lacquer, MDC from Japan. Right, and where does this uh, amazing piece of equipment come from? Uh, this is a German-made uh, 1974 Neumann VMS 70. Right. Um, pretty few and far between nowadays, and you know, still worth quite a bit of money. It's kind of like, uh, kind of like driving an old army tank, <laughs> really. You know what I mean? It's, you know, and each lathe has, uh, you know, its, its own calibration I guess uh, it can be set up slightly differently different cutting heads different settings mm. all those kinds of things will all yield different results as well as you know outboard analog processing and whatever you're using in your um, in your door but um, you know this thing has a few interesting little quirks that like I have a relationship with and know how to like dance uh -huh. around and yeah I kind of uh, get to know what this thing can cut, yes. you know, and, and how to, I guess, kind of like, you know, dance around these sort of characteristics of this particular setup. Well, uh, knowing my album, I know that some of the sides are like 19 minutes long, and then there's another side that's 22 minutes long. Yep. I've always wondered, how do you know how close to put the grooves together? Because you can space them how you want them. And of course, you know, you want to use as little runoff as possible to maximize right. the size of the disc. How do you know? Is it kind of a guesstimate because of your experience? It's a it's a little bit of a feel-based thing. We, we have kind of like, uh, you know, like ballpark gauges, you know, mm. but it's really dependent on the audio. If, if the audio is really bass heavy, it requires more space for the grooves to be cut. You know, there's, there's more fluctuation going on, so you need to have more space in between it. That said, there are things you can do to like trick what the cutting head is being sent and what the automatic groove spacing is actually doing. Right. Um, you know, most uh, LP side lengths aren't exceeding 24 minutes. Um, you know, so if it's a well attenuated pre-master and it's under that time limit, you can get a good volume uh, yeah. out, out of the cut, um, you know, with maximum land use. So looking at my album on the screen, we're gonna, we're gonna cut it in a minute. What are you looking for in that waveform to make sure that the needle doesn't jump out of the groove? <clears throat> I mean, visually, when I look at a waveform, I'm just looking for, you know, uh, high frequency transients to start with. Anything that sort of jumps out, um, fluctuating dynamics mm. you know most electronic music is pretty consistent it's mainly i guess like rock music or even like orchestral classical sort of stuff um where the dynamics will be 
so drastically different. You know, you'll have big, large sections of uh, quiet piece of audio and then some really loud things. I can really only cut to the loudest point, mm. um, as in my settings are dictated by the, the, the loudest moments right. of, of a pre-master, you know? So I'm looking for that, but then that's just, that's just on a visual point of view. It just gives me some cues to skim across. Um, but the only the only uh, digital processing that I usually use is a is a deesser for uh, any high frequencies that are strong and loud that need to be controlled because it requires the stylus to move left and right a lot faster, mm -hmm. and then sometimes it, it kind of can't keep up, and it will uh, if it cuts okay, it'll result in distortion on playback. Mm. If it if it trips out because stylus is too hot, it can't be done, so you have to right. reduce the volume. Um, so it's really just a DSA, a, a basic acceleration limiter, um, an elliptical EQ, which I have on my, uh, you know, outboard um, modules here, but also a digital version, you know, and a uh, um, mid-side EQ and a stereo EQ, um, which I have. So you're just rolling it off at everything under 20? Usually everything under 20 is just rumble. Yeah. It takes up extra space. Yeah. It's not something that's like really... That's quite low down though. I thought it would have been about 50. Well, you can do it at 50. I mean, the minimum, um, you know, high pass filter here is 63 hertz, mm. uh, which if you're centering your low frequency energy and you've got a roll off from there, it's still quite strong. You just don't have that big gut rumble base yeah. that, you know, if you're cutting something like heavy reggae or dub, yeah. you really want to feel the depth in the cut. But for punchy kind of electronic music, I think you can roll it off from there and center it. But I mean, the mastering engineer that's worked on your record has done an exceptional job and there's very little that I have to do. So. Yeah, well, that is William Bowden. So thank you, William, for the amazing yeah. vinyl masters. Yeah. We might uh, sit back and watch you cut this to the disc. Of course, this yeah. all happens in real time. And um, make a cup of tea. We've got to, we've got to sit through the whole, whole four sides. We've We've got 84 minutes here of cutting to disc, yeah. so uh, let's sit back and watch some of this process. All right, let's do it, Mark. That's the lack of playing back silence, by the way. Wow. That's amazing. Sounds pretty cool, eh? Yeah. Straight off the lacquer, man. It doesn't get any fucking cleaner than that. Wow. Wow, it's almost like top ends like digital almost. Cool, like, like. It's clean as. And that's with it like pushing pretty hard. But I just want to check a couple other bits. See, like with tracks like this, like even if there is a little bit of sizzle and distortion, I think it's a bit of distortion's it, alright, you know I mean? yeah, yeah, in the hat in the but, hats. But if it's if it's vocals and not the hats, that's a problem. That's a problem. Yeah. yeah. Seldom that I get like, yeah, you know, like an electronic record translating this well. So it's just cool, man. You're you're in luck. Thank you. That sounds amazing. The bass on that is real vinyl sound, but it's still clean as. Yeah. You know, that, that warmth, that, that roundness in the bottom end. Totally. That was definitely at the top of my bucket list. I can cross it off now. Here at Zenith Records, we've just seen the lacquer cut and the pressing of my new album, Archival Remixed. 
The super deluxe edition of the album is available from the Bandcamp link below. It contains two LPs on coloured vinyl, one on translucent green, one on translucent blue. You also get this. This is the DJ Mix version of the album. This is the art proof. Um, so the CD of the DJ Mix will be contained within the package. You'll also get the single tracks by themselves in a digital album and also a 25 track exclusive bonus album of alternative remix. So it's a massive package. I'm really looking forward to getting it into your hands and there's only 150 copies available. It's a limited edition. So make sure you click on that link below on Bandcamp and grab yourself a copy. Many thanks to Paul and Luke here at Zenith Records. What a day.